Which are the right settings to get the most out of your GoPro? Forget about giving away hundreds of dollars for accessories and simply spend these few minutes in order to get to know GoPro settings really well. Let's get started! Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. I'm the Tech Mishka. This is the latest from GoPro. Question is, are you getting the most out of it? And although this video is dedicated to GoPro Hero 11, pretty sure it's still relevant for future previous generations. And also, in case you have a DJI Osmo Action or Insta360 ONE R or ONE RS action camera. So, we're going to talk a lot about different settings, a variety of combinations, and I'm going to divide the video into two major sections. First, we're going to cover all the best settings which are suitable for beginners and then we're going to focus on the more professional grade features. Straight to the point with the more basic auto settings. Out of the box, GoPro Hero is a great camera with superb specifications, it can easily outperform most smartphones and similar sized cameras and its greatest advantage is recording in very wide angle and applying crazy good stabilization, something that you may not be able to replicate with most other devices on the market. The interface is extremely intuitive and you're gonna get to know it in no time. Reaching the various configuration items is meant to be done via swapping gestures. I'll now help you to choose the best ones and also to configure the shortcuts to be shown on the main screen as well as tuning the already existing presets. Let's begin by choosing a suitable resolution. Go ahead and use such recorded in 30 or 60 frames per second depending on what kind of footage you want to achieve. If you live somewhere in Europe, it would make good sense to switch the camera to PAL and record in 25 or 50 frames per second, which is the standard over here. Resolution is up to you. 4K brings small details, but files are going to be larger. 1080p is good most times, especially for beginners. The higher the frame rate, the smoother the footage is going to look like. If you get to see a color configuration option, keep normal or vibrant. Also, a good idea is to enable hint sight, because very often our first encounters with an action camera are related to missing the right shot or scene. The next goal we want to accomplish is to tune the shortcuts, and having the right set of these is going to save you tremendous amount of time. Here's where we can configure them. I for sure select the slow motion trigger, because this is going to be the fastest way to go to higher frame rates without reconfiguring anything. If you want more precise configuration of frame rates, you can of course do it from within the settings. But having the slow motion trigger just a tap away is invaluable in many cases. And let's face it, GoPro continues to be the king of slow motion. Secondly, I'm gonna add wind noise reduction, a setting which eliminates the nasty disruptions caused by the wind. It's very helpful when there is too much of wind or in case you do sports where fast motion is involved, like mountain biking, surfing, skateboarding and so on. This is quite important because if the recorded audio is poor, it's almost impossible to recover anything in post-production. Next, I would recommend keeping the trigger for controlling the stabilization. The default hyper smooth level is fairly good and almost perfect in most times, but there will be situations where you need to use the boost mode. It's as good as using a gimbal, with the difference that you don't. Last but not least is the zoom function. Many people find the GoPro field of view too wide, meaning that you have to be really close to the object in order to get it in a proper size. Sometimes this is not possible, therefore GoPro have added the zoom function. The more experience you get with your GoPro, the less you will rely on this feature because most of the times it adds digital zoom to your footage and it inevitably leads to lower quality, but most people that just start exploring their action cameras for the first time don't really care much about quality, it's the subject and the objects that really matter. In order to get footage with the best results, film in daytime, ideally sunny weather, avoid nighttime recordings, try to learn the ninja walk for smoother and non-wobbling footage, and try to get the most out of the settings. Besides these four shortcuts, there are a few different modes, so if at some point you figure out that you're using very often a specific group of settings, you should think about saving them as a preset. And also take a look into the default presets because some of them are really helpful. And if you want my piece of advice, especially if you're just starting to explore the world of action cameras, never ever try something new in case you're shooting footage that you really need. 
Speaking of the settings, this is where the famous Pro Tune features are available, and let's talk about how we can take advantage of these. First of all, I use action cameras a lot, in fact, I cannot think of another YouTuber using action cameras the way I do. So, I've gone through multiple setups and what I share now is based on the best that I've settled with after years of experience and trying different things. And these secretly are the settings that can turn enthusiast great footage into professional looking videos. But you will have to use good video editing software, Premiere Pro, DaVinci Resolve or Final Cut Pro. Secondly, following these advices, we assume that you well understand the differences in video resolutions and frame rates and know what color grading is. As a starter, I always record my videos in flat color mode and go for the highest bitrate settings, in this case the 10-bit option. I use flats because this lets you tune the colors a lot better in post-production and preserves more dark areas and highlights. The 10-bit setting is needed because it covers significantly greater bitrate, therefore significantly more data for post-processing. You can easily make it brighter or darker or more saturated without the image to fall apart. Achievable with 8-bit recordings too, but not in the same extent. The other little secret that I have about my GoPro camera is that 95% of the time I have on top an ND filter, ND32 in particular, because I figured it covers most of the scenarios I really want to film. Having fixed aperture, because this action camera has uh, infinity focus and fixed aperture, the parameters you can play with in order to properly expose are the ISO and the shutter speed. For the ISO, I think the rule is very clear. The higher the ISO, the more noise is going to be notable. As for the shutter speed, it can cause some really nice looking motion blur if you know how to follow the 180 degree rule. It's a standard usually followed by most Hollywood productions too. If you record in, let's say, 24 frames per second, tune the shutter value to be twice that, so we choose 1 by 48. If you record in 60 frames per second, shutter should be close to 1 by 120 and so on. The difference is quite notable in situations where you can see motion. This recording is done with auto settings, no ND filter, and in order to not overexpose, the automatic settings raise the shutter speed and it all looks too sharp, unusually sharp. With the ND filter and the 180 degree shutter rule followed, just notice how much smoother everything feels. The subject is sharp, but the pavement has this so beautifully looking motion blur. Keep in mind that the lower the shutter speed, the less effective the stabilization is going to be. So, the advantage of ND filters is huge. My settings are usually 24 FPS in 4K, 1x48 shutter and ISO in the range of 100 to 800, because I feel that above 800, there's too much grain. This mode is totally useless in low-light scenarios, though. The main disadvantage with GoPro in particular is its inability to show overexposure warnings, which can be quite a hassle sometimes. The quick settings in my case, which may vary in your situations, but I feel these are the best for most situations. A speed setting, you can quickly switch to 60 or 120 FPS in 4K, so that's more like a quick cheat for the video frame rates. Then I have the four lenses mode, because I use the horizon leveling from time to time, as well as the super view option. I keep the stabilization trigger here as well, because I sometimes entirely shut off the stabilization, especially when recording still scenes. And last but not least, of course, the shutter speed controls. I very often use the available presets, always rely on a 2.7K at 240 frames per second, which is insanely good and very easy to upscale to 4K with almost zero quality degradation. And I also keep the full frame option in case I need 5.3K for some reason. A good idea is to go and explore the Pro Tune settings. Bitrate should always be set to the highest possible value. White balance, depending on the case. Sharpness, keep it soft or medium. Raw audio is up to you. This is going to record everything in WAV. Well, these are some really easy to apply, commonly used best practices that certainly are going to help you to enhance your image quality and probably bring your footage on a different level. Because it's true, many people would say that GoPro is not really professional gear, but I think you can agree with me that in case you know really well what you're doing, you can capture some amazing shots and videos which are very cinematic looking, especially if you know how to properly expose, film 
and post-process all of that. And uh, in comparison to other cameras, with a GoPro you can capture some impossible angles, especially knowing that you can easily remotely control the action camera with a smartphone app. So that's everything about this episode. In case you want to share your favorite features or combination of such, please comment down below. That's the same place where you can reach out in case you have some questions. If you want one piece of advice for the end for the GoPro Hero 11, be patient. Getting the most in terms of quality is a process and that's a fantastic journey to go. And thank you very much for watching this whole episode. I'm Michael. Look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye.